Makanda Permaculture is a video series that follows the efforts of a few individuals around the Makanda region, formerly known as Gramstown, towards sustainable living and environmental improvement. In today's episode, you are going to learn about another food growing method known as aquaponics. Thing. In permaculture, we work on systems. There's about 50 different systems um, that we work with, but aquaponics is one of those systems. By applying the principles of permaculture into what we're building here, we're enabling a much higher, a much more optimized system to exist. As we we learnt a little, tried a little, and we worked on a very small system. And all of a sudden we decided that, you know, this is something that can be done. Um, and so we stepped it up a notch. Instead we, we, we stepped it up a couple of notches. Um, but this is really where the magic happens. Yeah, these, these are all the fish tanks here. Um, there's different sizes of fish. Um, we, we, we farm with a, a fish called uh, the, the tilapia, uh, Mozambican tilapia. tilapia. Um, because their <clears throat> tolerance towards temperature fluctuations is quite high. A lot of fish require a very set temperature, otherwise they, they go under stress. What fish do by virtue of their own existence is they require food and they require um, oxygen. And when you provide fish with oxygen and food, what they do is um, Obviously, they eat and, and they, they excrete their, their waste. Um, and their waste um, becomes the food for our big system. And, and so what happens is that, that little pump in here then takes all of the excrement from the different fish tanks, because they all link up and they all fall down in here. And that pump then pumps the water, which is now full of nitrate up into the plant producing system right and the, the beauty of this is that and I have said before we don't we don't um, we don't farm the fish we don't farm the fish at all um, we, we farm the bacteria because it's those bacteria that are converting the nitrites into nitrates which become bioavailable to the plants and this is the beginning of it all. All right. From the fish, small pump, 350 watts, I think. will come up out of here. It'll split into a system. And these are our drive lines. Okay, we call them our drive lines. So outside from the fish, all of that nitrate-dense water and nutrient-dense water is being pumped right up into our growing area. Okay. And the rest we work on gravity, because remember, we're trying to operate at a level where the energy requirements for the system are running at a minimal. This running 20,000 odd liters of water, I don't even think we're operating more than 650 watts. Okay, now just to put it into perspec uh, perspective, um, a microwave runs at 2,000 watts. Okay, yes, you don't operate a microwave all day, every day, but you know, you've got to understand this, 300 to 600 watts is very, very, very little, okay, um, considering what's occurring. So that pump pumps out the water um, and flows up our drive lines here um, and it gets right the way to the top here. And I think we should have a little look at where, where it all starts off because um, it'll make a lot more sense.
Right. Now that the water's been pumped up and it starts to irrigate itself, all these troughs start to fill up equally, all at the same rate, all at the same time. Um, and by them filling up very slowly, what it's doing is it's allowing, like I said to you, the bacteria that lives on and around the surface of these stones as their substrate or as their growing area. And it's those bacteria that are responsible for the conversion of these nitrites into nitrates. And the nitrates are those, the nitrogen and hydrogen charged ions that are available, bioavailable to all the plants in different volumes. Hence why we plant different types of plants because they absorb and retain and use different levels of the nutrients required. So with the nutrient-dense water being, a, being, I suppose, irrigated into our troughs or what we call our media beds, okay, all that happens is it starts to flow at a rate of about, I think we're at mm, 600 liters an hour. Yeah, about 600 liters an hour or something like that. And what happens is, is quite, quite fun. And this is, this is where it really gets quite fun. Um, because what we've developed is, is, is a concept of what they call bell siphons. Okay, now bell siphon is quite simply something that looks like this. All right, um, we found some old pipe um, on a farm and we drink a lot of fresh juice and luckily enough uh, we took the bottoms of some of the juice bottles off um, and made our own ones. Um, but basically how this works is like, <clears throat> it's like a, a cage. Okay, so inside here what we've got is we've got a standpipe, okay, and that water, as I was saying, slowly starts to fill up. Now you can, you can be aware that, that the top level of stone here is just like a covering layer, but if I, if I dig in here, you can see that right beneath the surface, it's wet. Right. There's even lots of worms. And, and there's worms, and well, we call them heterotrophs, but yeah, um, there's all kinds of things <laughs> you, can't, you can't see. Um, but this is the beauty, is they're all doing their little jobs, okay? And because they're living in a water-based system, that's all that they require. The size, the scale at which people are trying to produce food is requiring huge amounts of land, okay? When you look into systems like this, and you condense the space, the output is still right up there. It's just by optimizing its ability to do what it wants to do. Survive, I suppose, and thrive, actually.